Welcome to Conversations, Haitian American Women in Politics. My name is Naomi Blumier, and I'm your host for this evening. We are so excited to have in the studio with us Marie Woodson, Democratic nominee for State House District 101. Welcome, Marie. How are you today? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing great. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. I always have a good time whenever I sit down to talk to you. Thank you. That's, that's, that's a great thing. That's a great thing. And I also thank you for doing your part in elevating us women who are vying for office. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Marie, everyone has a journey mm -hmm. that leads them to making great decisions. Mm -hmm. Please tell us your story <laughs> and what led you down this path. Wow, wow, what a, what a question. Um, actually, my story, I know so many people have heard it before, but for this audience, I would tell you that my journey started very early on. I was born and raised in Haiti, as you know, came here at the age of 21. But like any other Haitian families, once you're in school, you're doing well, they always want you to become a doctor, a lawyer, and an engineer. And my dad, of course, wanted me to become a doctor. Little did he know that he was really forming a public servant. As well, that's not what my purpose was in life. Mm -hmm. to, me, that's what, to me, that's what it looks like. It wasn't my purpose to go to medical school because at a very early at a young age in Haiti, my father used to make me go and teach kids whose parents could not afford to send them to school during the summer. You know, every kid during the summer, you would enjoy yourself and have fun. But he would tell me, he would make me teach those kids because he was able to afford school to send us to school. But there are some kids who did not have the privilege to go to school. So I would spend my summer teaching kids and then he would give me $5. He would say, you spend two, you save two and you give one to those who did not have. Right there, he was teaching me the greatest lesson in life. Absolutely. So after philosophy and IT, as you know... Um, what good is that? It's like you finish high school. Okay. But really, in the high school in Haiti, it's like you have the first two years of college, the way that the school system is designed. Mm -hmm. Because after philosophy, you start into the discipline that you really want to, whether, you to know, pursue. medical, to pursue medical or law or engineering school. So I went to take the pre-entrance exam for medical school. You know, you have the class of prep class that you had to take. So I went to College Bird, took that prep class, you know, studied very hard. I even aced the exam. But guess what? My name did not even show up on the list because I mm. did not have a family member working for the government or I did not have a godfather. Anyway, to make a long story short, I did not make it. And my father made the hardest decision to send my brother and I here because he said, no matter if I die right now, no matter what I leave you, you're with waste it because you don't have much up here. But if mm. you come here, you get an education, you know, you uh, get a degree or you do something with yourself, you will always be able to provide for yourself, for your family, or you would excel. That's the way that he saw it. So he made the hardest decision to send us here. And you know, Lola like I won IT, okay, ou pa ge problem, ou se jen simon la vie en was. So you did not really want to come here. And tell you the truth, at the beginning, it was hard for me to adjust. But one thing that taught me, it taught me that politics is at the cornerstone of everything that you do in life. And right then and there I say, I saw how politics impacted me in a negative way by not being to go to medical school because you did not have a godfather. I say one thing that I intend to do in the future is to use politics to benefit others. And this is why after 35 years of county government experience, because I landed a little job in county government working as a social worker aide, while I went to school full-time, got my bachelor's, my master's, and I was able to be promoted all the way to where I was responsible for five divisions, coming from the bottom and work my way up. And I said to myself, once my daughter goes to college, my youngest one, I would get into politics. And I decided to start 
later on because two things. First, you have to work to support, to help supporting your family. Absolutely. That's one. Second, as a mother, I value motherhood where I feel like I owe it to my kids to be there for them. And politics takes so much out of you. If you don't have the time and the energy to focus on it, you might not as well get in there because it's not an easy road. So once my daughter started college, I told my husband, it's time for me to jump, to put my hat in the ring and run for office. And here I am. The Being rest this, is history. The rest is history. I'm Democratic nominee for Florida State House District 101. And we say Fini. Say Fini. <laughs> Marie, when you think about the word purpose, mm -hmm. what does it mean to you? To me, your purpose is what you are set to do in life, what God created you to do. You might not know it, you might not see it, but it's in the making from way back. And then he puts you in a trajectory where you keep going and sometimes it's not easy to find your ways or to get to where you need to be. But eventually, if you trust them enough and you do the work, you will fulfill your purpose. And my purpose in life is be of service to others because I always look at it, what good it is for me to have a purpose and to not do for others, to not help others, to not make sure that others benefit from whatever God has given me. So to me, it's not a purpose until it helps others to get to where they need to be. I love that. When you think about community, mm -hmm. how do you define it? To me, the uh, definition of community is the village. I don't look at community as just certain people or the mm. people that you can really see. I look at it as the entire village because in that village, you have all kinds of people. You have the ones who need help. You have the ones who don't need help. And if they don't need help, they can contribute into something else. I look at the friends, the families, the close people, the stakeholders See, sir? that define a community as a whole. And it's not a community until everyone really feel part of that, until it's like inclusive. Côté tout le monde fait partie de communauté et pour tout le monde senti que fait partie que fait partie communauté a vraiment le ça nous carré les nos communautés vraiment because it's not just about certain people it's not just about a little group of people it's about all of us together making it an enjoyable community Marie you have given us a mouthful thank you when we talk about a Democratic nominee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we understand that you're halfway there. Mm -hmm. Please explain to us what that process is, uh -huh. the current race uh -huh. that you are in, uh -huh. and how do you see it panning out? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. A Democratic nominee. How did I get here? How did I get how there? Did you get how did here? I get here? It started from a really humble journey where when I came into the first, I was trying to see what seat should I go for? Mm. And I've lived in my community for 26 years. You've seen me in Dade County doing all these things, work for the county for 35 yeah. years. I was 21 when I came from Haiti and six months after I landed a little job. So I started working in county government, but I have always wanted, as I mentioned to you, to run for office, but guess what? When I came into the race, I was told the seat was not a Haitian seat. Mm. Why, Explain that to us. Why, hey, when I look at us, what do I see? I see us. I don't see this person, that person. We all could be different shades, different colors, but we all, you know, come one from people. one God with one people. Exactly. So I did not let that bother me. I said, Marie, one thing your father taught you, your father taught you, first of all, to work hard, to be strong, to always give it your best, and to give back, to always take another one along with you. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna give it my best. So I talked to my husband first, I talked to my kids, and 
My husband, as you know, as everybody knows, I always made it very clear, he's not, he doesn't care for politics that much because that dirty side of it, mm -hmm. he doesn't like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he knows that I had my heart into this, this is what I wanted to do. So from day one, even though he didn't really like it, he supported, he supported me 100%. And I'm grateful for that, I'm thankful for that. My kids, one is really gang-ho about politics. Yeah, my daughter. My son is more reserved, but he said, Mom, if that's what you want, I'm behind you 100%. I would do whatever I can. The only thing I won't do, I won't raise money. Mm -hmm. And my husband is the same way. They don't like asking for money and so forth. Mm -hmm. But my daughter, she's just like mom. Let's do what we have to do. It was hard for me to, to raise money at the beginning, but I learned how to do it. So I started, I jumped into the race and I was, I surrounded myself with some good people who believe in me from day one. Absolutely. And when I went to talk to some people, they were like, yes, Marie, I think you have this. You can really make it. You can really make a difference. But my husband knows once I get into something, That's I give it, it 150%. We breeze the campaign. We sleep the campaign. We it was all about camping. If you come to my house, that's all you would hear. The entire, every conversation is about camping. camping. So we had also some great volunteers who really believed in us. Great. So we give it 150% and God did the rest. I was blessed with the, being the Democratic nominee on, on uh, August the 18th. And I know that God still has my back. The people will believe in me has my back. The voters, the resident of District 101. It was a very, it was the best, one of the best experience of my life. I would say having my kids was one and we're of the talk hardest. About motherhood. Yeah, I would say it's what was one of the hardest. You know, when you're having your baby, you have your son, you know what it's like. I think besides that, this was one of the hardest experience, but one of the greatest experience of my life as well, because it taught me so much. Mm -hmm. I have learned so much. And I know I, the work continues. People telling me, well, your, your district is predominantly a democratic district. Mm -hmm. Why are you working so hard, you know, for November 3rd? I don't take anything for granted. Mm -hmm. I don't take anyone lightly because this is politics. Yes. Sometimes the table could turn. When you think you're on a good track, things can turn. And this is, 2020. This is 2020. Uh, we witnessed that four years ago when we thought one person was going to win and God knows, we yes. didn't know what happened. It was like lightning. Yes. So I don't like surprises. Therefore, I do what I have to do and God would do the rest. If God want me to be the next state representative for District 101, it and that's be. what would happen. But I would say to any body who is listening out, especially women. I'm mm -hmm. a woman, we need more women in office. Young women, older women, middle-aged women. We need all of us collectively. It's not about people with experience. You know, people, they were talking joke. I have 35 years in county government experience. And they were talking about you don't have the experience because I was a first time candidate. But guess what? I did not let that stop me. And I had two good opponents. They ran very good races. Yes. And they've both been in office for a while. And yes. I respect the work that they have done. And I have a good relationship. I spoke to both of them. I don't believe on creating enemies because you want it. Because at the end of the day, it's all about people. It's all about us. Politics is going to be gone one day. But you still have to answer to people. And the community. And your community. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, the journey has, been, has not been easy. And you look when you thought you know so much, you learn so, so much, much more. more. And the human aspect of it, God knows. That's another conversation. Absolutely. Marie, let's talk about motherhood. <laughs> uh, COVID, uh, yes. children were home yes. from college. Yes. How did that work in your household? Oh. Yeah, and you know, you have your son actually, even though he's younger, you know, but you know, with COVID, your life has changed completely. Tremendous. You had to regroup, you had to do things a different way. And of course, my youngest is in college. Mm -hmm. um, she's, she was in DC because of COVID, she's been here since March. She hasn't been able to return to school, the school, you know, they are having distance learning right mm -hmm. now. 
So in my house, trying to run a campaign, okay? <laughs> campaign. Having college. a daughter who is in college, and my son as well, he works, but he's uh, taking, he went back to school to get his master's. So wow. everybody's using the net. And you gotta it was get on Zoom. so hard, you get on, uh, I'm on Zoom over here and she wants to get on Zoom in the other room and Wi-Fi is crashing. So it's been really kind of crazy, put it that way. Wow. But you know what COVID has done for us too? It has allowed us to even spend more quality time with our Absolutely. family. Because Absolutely. you can have a meeting in your own house. You don't have to run to go here, to go there. Mm -hmm. And by my kids being home, I love it. My husband would tell you that. I'm a, you know how we are, Haitian yes, mothers. We don't care how old they are. They we home. know Simon. <laughs> 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 but really, we manage. We have handled it, you know, in a way that we see fit. Sometimes I have to go. As a matter of fact, uh, we had some issues with Wi-Fi recently. Uh, she had to go to a library to do it or to her grandfather, you know, to my father until we had the Wi-Fi situation fixed. fixed. But it has not been easy. But do you handle it? That's Women, right. we make do with whatever we have. We do. Say fini, oui? say fini, say say fini. Fini. We don't let that anything bother us. Due to COVID-19, many organizations need a safe and equipped place to host meetings and to broadcast live on many social media platforms. BL Workspace can help. All you really need to do is come in and start your live events with whom you wish to connect with. You can connect with church congregations, small businesses, or throw a concert. We are here to help. With a crew of one or two people and with a strict social distance protocol in place, this is the place where you can hold your virtual meetings. BL Workspace, connecting people and organizations. Call us now to book, 786-440-8121. You can also connect with us on Instagram at BL Workspaces. Marie, we got some questions from you, from the community. Uh, mm -hmm. one, uh, one person wrote, healthcare has always been an issue. Mm -hmm. As the next representative, mm -hmm. do you have any plan to mm -hmm. help the many families who mm -hmm. are living paycheck to paycheck mm -hmm. and, and unable to afford health care mm -hmm. insurance? Actually, that's, a, that's an issue that is very dear to my heart because when you look at what happened with COVID, that's a good example where people did not have health care, where people going in and out of hospital and uh, trying to survive, you know, trying to live. And not only that, we have a community where we have so many uninsured people, yes. especially in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. We have women suffering from breast cancer uh, that they can't even afford a mammogram. mammogram. We're fortunate enough to have insurance where we can go, but how about those who don't have? As well, We you have a group of people fall, who fall into the donut hole where they're not making enough money to be to get Medicaid, whatever money they're making, if they a dollar over the threshold, they're not qualified for Medicaid. So I believe on Medicaid expansion to expand it to the part to the group who are not able to qualify for Medicaid because of the little bit of money that they're making while they can't afford to even pay their rent. They're trying to make end meet. So Medicaid expansion is big on my list. Affordable healthcare for everyone yes, is something I would like to see pass on the state. As you know, as a legislator, you can't do anything by yourself. You need the vote in Tallahassee to make sure that those legislation pass. So I intend to go to Tallahassee and work with the other side because we have more Republicans than you have Democrats. That's why I want more women to get in. I want women like you, all the women who are listening, who are looking. We can do it alone. As you know, we only have one Haitian American in the state legislature, which is Doty Joseph. Mm -hmm. And God knows she's doing a great job. She's doing her best. We know up there with so many Republicans, she's working with her colleagues and other ones. We don't have any in Broward. I'm the first Haitian American to run for a state seat in Broward wow. County. And so far, like you say, I have been the Democratic Miami. So when I win the seat, healthcare is on top of my list. And one issue that I would tell you that is killing our community as a whole is mental health, which is part of the healthcare. Because right. if you don't have the mental well-being, you can't keep a job. 
you can afford to hold an apartment or mortgage. It's a lot of things that you can do. So if we take care of the health as a whole, comprehensive health care, then we would address a lot of these issues. I'm not promising that I'm going to solve the world problem, but I would do my very best in order for us to do what we need to do to get our community healthy. Because once you have a healthy community, then we can prosper, we can do a lot of other things. Thank you, Marie. Uh, the next question that we have for you from the community is, during the Haitian American, during the Haitian American Women Charting a Path Forum, we asked about bringing about leaders and serving the community. Mm -hmm. Now that you're elected. Mm -hmm. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> November 3rd. <laughs> um, uh, not, when you will be, when you uh -huh. are elected, uh -huh. let's, let's rephrase it for the person. Uh -huh. um, when you're elected, how will you bring about young black Haitian leaders? How will serving your constituents look like in the upcoming months? Okay. And you, you, you mentioned it uh, uh, earlier that you, you believe that we should have a wider net mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of um, individuals mm -hmm. running for office. But okay. how are you going to include the younger Haitian American? This person is obviously probably a millennial, okay. a young person. Okay. First of all, I'm a woman. I'm a black woman. I'm a Haitian woman. I was the chairwoman of the Commission for Women, the Miami-Dade mm -hmm. Commission for Women. I chair the Family Action Network movement with Serve Women. Mm -hmm. So you know I have it on my DNA to elevate women, especially the younger generation. Mm -hmm. And as a Haitian, I owe it to the Haitian, young Haitian woman, not only to be a role model for them, but also to do my very best to help them out. Not saying that I would not help any other young women because I don't believe uh, I will be a state representative for everyone. Every woman, every young woman, I would try to help. So I intend to take, it's funny that you asked me this question. Today I was interviewing uh, for the legislative aid that I need in Tallahassee because you can't wait last minute to try to do that. You need mm. to start moving on. From now, wow. And there was a young woman that I interviewed today and I know she does not, she hasn't been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. She has done some internship in the state legislature, and, but she's young and she reminds me so much of myself when wow. I was starting in county government. Mm -hmm. And I look at my husband, my husband say, I know you're gonna give us some consideration. I can see that in you because I have a duty Absolutely. to help the younger generation, to help young women. I have plans. I want it to be inclusive, especially yes. you have everybody watching out for everybody. So why we shouldn't watch out for our younger Ourselves. women and try to elevate them give them the exposure that they need, give them the coaching that they need, the mentoring that they need. And not only that, they have a lot to offer. So it's not we going to do my thing, they're gonna be part of the process with me because they have a lot to contribute, just like I might have some wisdom to pass on, some knowledge to pass on and give them the, ex because exposure is key. I'm seeing it with my own daughter who has been exposed to, at such a young age where I took her on the Marines. Whatever I was doing, she was part of it. I used to take my kids and everywhere. My husband, we did everything as a family, just like you. Everything you see the family unit. And you can see the difference, how they so involved, how they doing so much. So I want that for every other young woman. And I would invite a lot of them because I'm going to try to have a group of younger women, young girls, young mm -hmm, women, mm -hmm. for us to work on some projects together. I, I, I must say, personally speaking, I love that. And that leads me to segue succession planning. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier that right now in the mm -hmm. legislature, we, mm -hmm. all, we as, as the Haitian American mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. we only have one representative, mm -hmm. which is Dottie Joseph. Joseph. Mm -hmm. And I 
in my opinion, that should not be. Mm -hmm. And shouldn't. I believe that the reason mm -hmm. uh, that we are in mm -hmm. that position mm -hmm. is due to lack of succession planning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me really quickly mm -hmm. what your vision for succession planning mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. and can we count on you mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. ensure that there is a transfer mm -hmm. of power mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. once you have completed mm -hmm. your season, mm -hmm. let's call it that, mm -hmm. your season mm -hmm. within the legislature. Because there there is a there's a cap there's a there's a cap not only there's a cap no one should go in there and think you're going to be there forever and one thing that i did also working in miami dade county whatever position that i was in whatever the position is i always identify some people that i know can take on excellent if you there okay you're in a position let's just say you're a division director mm -hmm. I'm not the type of leader, if I'm not there, the show must stop. That means you're not a good leader. If you're not there, your show should run as usual. You should have people who really can do everything. It's really when people are insecure that they don't want to allow other people in Heavy. or don't let them uh, know what you know because I don't care what I know. I feel good when I pass it on to you. At least you could be of benefit to others if you would do the same with others. Thank you, I'll give you an example. I had a young woman in my day who came in as a clerk, okay? I was over at the payment division finance at that time. Mm -hmm. And I took her in as a clerk. She was promoted as an accountant one, an accountant two, an accountant three. And now she's a four. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I believe on elevating women. So I would make it, I would say I have a commitment not only to have a succession plan, but to really take young women and put them under our wings, under my wings and others. And I'm not just going to expose them to myself. I'm going to as well expose them to other people. And when I say others, I believe on, you know, not just on your little corner yes. as me being Haitian, yes. but Hispanic, African-American, white, whatever I have in my network. The you community would be at large. You would be exposed to it so you would also learn. I won't be able to take everyone, but we can meet, Absolutely. we can talk, we can Absolutely. have a group of people and I would reach out to you. You can help me with some of those things Absolutely. that we would be trying to create, Absolutely. you know, and other people. And it would be my pleasure. So I won't solve the world's problem, but I promise you I will try my very best. And Marie, and that's all that we can ask of you is your very best. <laughs> at this time, Marie, there are so many women sitting at home probably getting ready to leave their office or just on the couch saying to themselves, wow, what an amazing woman. Oh, thank you. And at the same time, there are those who are sitting at home in your district <laughs> thinking to themselves, wait a minute, I thought she was already elected. I, I have to go vote again? Not yet. Please speak a word of encouragement to that woman who may consider your path and has not yet uh, gotten the courage to do so, and then speak uh, specifically a creole to tout voter in the district 101 who has the need to vote again 3 November. Thank you so much. You're such a lovely, caring, talented woman as well. I thank you for what you do day in, day out, and you are so courageous, actually. I've always had that level of respect for you from day one when we met and we had conversations. So may God continue to bless you and keep you strong in what you're doing as well. For any woman, any young girls, or anyone who's looking at me out there and say, how did I get here? I would tell you, follow your heart. Do not let anyone or anything stop you. Follow your heart, speak to your family, and take that leap of faith. Okay, you have to go on it. You cannot let it stop you. Because had I let it stop me, I would not be where I'm at today. And it's not easy, believe me, it's not. You're gonna find your obstacles, but there's nothing that you cannot conquer. There's nothing, no matter how many times. It's not how many times you fall like they said, it's how many times you rise up. And there's a quote by Ralph Endo, one of the philosophers who say, do not go where the path might lead you. Go create your own path and leave a trail. Okay? 
All right? Really? And that's what I believe on. Just like in Broward, mm -hmm. there wasn't any Haitian woman in the state legislature, and they were telling me it's going to be so hard for you to break the glass ceiling or to pierce that hole. Get, I did not let that stop you me. You shattered it. I went and I've worked. I've worked with people who believe in me, who saw something in me, and I was able to get to where I'm at now. Now, I need you. I'm not fully there yet. I Wait, need dinner, you dinner, to dinner. remember. Please. Halfway there. November 3rd is the election where I would be facing a Republican contender. Mm -hmm. But guess what? I have no doubt that you will continue to be with me, to support me. So together, we can make it happen on November 3rd. Haïtienne pareil, moi, yo konya ma pala avec nous, ma di nous comme ça. Depuis nous gagnons, on but dans la tête, nous avons un goal, un bagaille que nous voulons atteindre, réussir. C'est tout politique, toute vie, nous, tout ça nous fait, nous revolve around politics, ok? Mm -hmm. Nous levons sur route, nous marchons, c'est politique lié. La rue, la machine, nous avons couru dans la rue, c'est politique. So, si c'est ça que nous voulons, pas décourager, cherchons un côté. Aller là-dedans, parler avec l'autre monde, demander conseil, demander si c'était ça nous qu'a fait. Surtout jeune monde, je ne m'en parle avec nous tous. Quel monde qui a dit c'est pas temps pour, pas gain à faire de temps. Bot son bagage, l'on rentre là-dedans, il prend pile énergie, il prend pile temps, et puis bat tout pour gagner de l'argent pas au serré. Parce que le pas gagner de l'argent là-dedans, il va dépenser en pile. Vous comprenez? So, gardez qui sort à vous, fait qui sort à vous, les rentrer, parler avec mon yo, mais préparez-vous pour faire travail là. Travail là, faut do analyser le bien et faut do travail, faut do faire stratégie qui oui. pour permettre qu'on arrive côté qu'on veut arriver à. Pour qu'on finisse arriver net quand on dit non, on besoin nous encore parce que qu'on y a l'âme te gagne contre deux l'autre démocrate qui était là en bas avec moi, même le yon te gagne 15 ans, yon l'autre te gagne 12 ans depuis on en office. C'est moi même qui était novice. Oui. Je n'ai pas pile endorsement, je n'ai pas de sentinelle, je n'ai pas de goutlis, je n'ai pas pile monnaie. Quand il y a tout le monde qui n'a pas même parce que c'est une démocratique dans le pays, il y a 3 novembre, besoin pour nous aller, pour nous voter, pour Marie Woodson dans le Braoud, pour nous gagner tout en Haïtien dans le Braoud dans cette législature. Ce n'est pas facile, non? Mais nous sommes campés avec nous et nous disons merci beaucoup. Et nous même tout nous disons merci, non? Parce que depuis que nous sommes finis, nous sommes allés, nous sommes campés avec moi. It was my pleasure. So, my plan for you. If you are in the office, you are in the office, you are in the office, you are always going to be able to learn with us because you are learning a lot. If you think you know, it's the candidate who is 21. You are in the office of the office. So, I am with you. 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 I am with you in the office. Thank you so very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our conversation with Democratic nominee Marie Woodson for State Representative District 101.